That's an exciting part, just to see how the artists are imitating that space, that landscape. Um, um, I mean, I think it's so full of reference to landscape, be it ornament generated from landscape, um, um, references to things that monitor change in landscape, um, be it weather vanes or anemometers. Or, so there, there are a lot of clues that, I guess rather than assemble it in a linear way, I, I really want people to do it um, in a pulse that seems like the way we understand a landscape. You know, the timing in a landscape is such that um, to understand it, you've got to understand the smell and the wind and the strata and the geology and the, um, uh, there's so many levels to it, but I want people to have to work for it. And the idea of is property transferable? What is property? Can you have an emotional property without the physical? Can you have the physical without the emotional? Can you have a tie to a place that you've just been in for two minutes? And I wanted to play with the idea of taking that with me, like having, you know, your own piece of land. For the 4190 show, I've got um, the property series, which it's shown as a grid of 16 of these slabs that are made of compressed soil and a very thin veneer of beeswax. Just they, those were made um, by me going around for a year and a half to two years and collecting soil from where I was and putting them in my homemade press that I'd engineered to specifically make these square foot blocks of soil. The other body of work that I have in the 4190 show is a tracking series and that represents every intersection between my studio and the museum. And the point of that is to show not the destination or the route necessarily but every option on that route. It's a matter of just moving through the environment and then some little thing will kind of catch my eye. But if you pay attention to the little cracks in the sidewalk, the little sort of idiosyncratic things about a drain pipe or a guardrail that make it utterly unique, um, it will sort of illuminate the landscape and you know sort of elevate it from uh, that sort of mundane status where you can't even see it anymore. Come forth, and I think that that shine is sort of paying attention and being in the moment and being aware of your surroundings and, and lavishing some love on them and, and kind of indicating that they're worthy of your attention and that. The location of the museum right on the river um, to me was in, in thinking about landscape and the relationship of sound and sight is sort of reversed where the sound happens first. Um, it's nothing that we experience, experience orally, but it creates the vision. So the sound happens and then that, that sound creates something that we're seeing. And in, in the work, I think that it's, it's, a, it's very much a visual experience. It's, and, and it, it's, um, but in the same, at the same time, it's sort of a visual in terms of sound. I can't remember the, when I've made a painting where I didn't have stuff on the bottom of the canvas, which immediately spells out landscape. For the past few years, I've been taking a lot of photographs, and I keep hoping, and the, you know, it's usually out on the street, that, that seeps into the paintings, and I think that might be perhaps more than I immediately realized. They represent a place that, to me, is basically who I am. Uh, they're not just landscapes of a chosen place, but these are my alter egos in a sense. I, I want whatever is there to be coming forward to every viewer and uh, engage them in some kind of a dialogue about something. The easiest temptation is to change yourself to fit in according to what's out there. And uh, it's much more difficult to do what you think you should do and hope that what's out there changes to accommodate you.
wants to know my enemy Don't burn my many please And I hope that you're wrong for the last time I'm taking one more flight It's all